Hello everyone and welcome back to our inventory system series. Previously we've worked on our action menu, how we're going to take a little break from that and work on our display message. A simple display message to show to the player what they are actually hovering over rather than just relying on that print string we've got in the corner there. So let's get started and make it a nice pretty little button on the screen. So for the interaction message we're going to just go ahead and make a design for our message here so go to widget blueprint new user widget and we'll go display message and in here you're going to keep it quite simple you're just going to have a canvas panel um, and inside the canvas panel it's going to be a simple border that we want to use to contain it and this position of the border we're going to put down the bottom here and we we'll change the position in the Y to be minus 200. And that will just lift it off the bottom there at the bottom of the screen. And I just want to change its size in the X and Y here. So I'm going to change the size X here to be maybe 500. And Y I'm going to change to 80. Okay. Uh, now this looks kind of plain at the moment. So let's tweak this with a custom material. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new material here. MUI. And this will be called uh, message. And in here, I like to do this uh, sort of gradiated fade going on here. So let's first we'll change this to a UI material. And for this, I'm going to use a linear gradient. Now, linear gradient comes with the U gradient or V gradient. We'll be using U gradient for this because it's uh, longer in the horizontal. Uh, and what this looks like, by the way, if I just drag that in, it looks like this. Okay, just gradiates one to the other. Now, if you were to, say, take this and do a one minus, it would flip it around. So now the other side would be white and the other side would be black. Okay. Now if we were to combine these two together, we want to get a fade that has a fade on both the left and to the right there. So if I can't just add these together, because the issue we get with that is that it all just looks the same. Okay. It ultimately all, all, all equal one. So I can't add them together. So let's take a look at multiplying. Let's multiply these together. Um, but the issue we have with this is that yes you'll get a fade on both sides but you're going to get a kind of halfway of 0 0.4 0 0.5 in the middle there too so once we've got multiplier done there we're going to multiply again basically boost it up a little bit and this divide that uh, multiply sorry is going to be typed down down here for constant and we're going to multiply it by four okay and that just brings up brightness there so we're aiming for the middle to be one and then the edges to be zero okay so it's like condensed there uh, so in this multiply here we're going to take this and we're going to just clamp it make sure it is still between 0 and 1 in its sizes and put that into the final color there now we also want this to work in the opacity too so let's change this to be a translucent material and we'll put this into opacity as well now hit apply and save so now if I go to my my display message widget I'm going to go to my border brush and we'll do MUI and use message and it comes through looking like this now what I like to do is make this black so I'm going to change my tint here to be black or close to it in fact actually just go full black there um, and in that box we're going to have our text in there so text I put into border there so text we're going to put in the center so let's go up top here and just center center with that all in line I'm going to change the size of it to like maybe 14 that's a small like that now obviously this text here is going to change so we want to make sure this is ticked to be variable and has a name on it to make it easier for us to identify so text underscore message and we also want to change the visibility of this box border here so on the border here tick the variable button there and we're going to call it from box underscore uh, message and hit compile and save okay so let's now go over to our graph and on the pre-construct here we're going to uh, take a variable which is going to be the message variable and that's going to be text we're going to drag that out to get and then drag out our text message and do set text plug that in like so 
Okay, well if this message has been set to be empty, we want to then make this whole thing invisible. So if text is empty, we're going to do set visibility. And we can do the whole widget. In fact, yes, it's just a whole widget. You don't need to do it per box here. Uh, but we'll do this with this boot in here by using a select node. And text is empty. We'll plug that into there. And if it is false and text is not empty, we're going to change it to be non hit testable self and all children. So therefore, we can't click on it by accident by doing anything there. And if it's true, we'll make this hidden. I'll save. Now we're also going to make another function here called show message. So I'm going to right click and do custom event and do show message. And this is the one we're actually going to call when we want to actually display something on the screen. The pre-construct only happens at the start. Um, that's it. So on the show message here, we're going to take our message variable, plug it into set, and then I'm going to drag my pink pin here over to the event and it'll add a pin for me right there and then. I then want to take my set here and drag it into my pre-construct code so it can run it all over again. I change the text and then change the visibility accordingly. Hit compile and save on that and go over to my inventory system. When I begin play, we're going to do create widget. And we're going to choose our display message widget. And return value, we're going to promote that to a variable. Call that one as display message. And we're going to do add to viewport. Now, one thing I forgot to do is we want to make it so that thing's hidden by default. So I'm going to go over to my display message and go to my design view and just change the visibility of this whole entire thing by clicking on the top hierarchy. And yep, change it to visibility to hidden. That's what I want. Make sure that is the case. Okay, um, so that's all that there. But now we actually want it to show. So in here, that's what happens on the tick event. So go into the tick event. And in there, we're going to go into our interact trace. And after look at actor here, we're going to take our on display, uh, sorry, display message and call that function we made called show message. Now this one, we're clearing it. So we're going to leave it at blank, which will make it invisible. So we're going to copy this and put it right at the end of this. If I get rid of this print string, we'll just put this in here instead. And the message will go into there. Visit compile and let's take a look at that in game. There you go, pick up Apple, pick up Apple. And if I drag these in and drop some. Uh, drop one. You'll see it says pick up Apple. Okay, so now we have a little display message on the screen telling us what we can do with our inputs. And there we go, we've got something quite simple yet quite tasteful for what we need to actually achieve here. Obviously you can design it however you like, but that is how we make it work with our interaction tray system that we have in our inventory component. In the next episode, we're gonna go through and add in our use button for our action menu. So we can use and consume items for our inventory. You can catch that episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where my videos are available early to all my patrons from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And if you're not really subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.